One of the examples we saw was we did a rod, right? And we found the center of mass of the rod. Uh, for a uniform rod, it was at the center, okay? And then I've already done the moment of inertia of a uniform rod. I've shown you the proof of that, so we don't need to redo that one. But how about the non-uniform uh, uh, um, rod? Remember, we had a rod in chapter 9, the, the linear mass density of the rod was varying as kappa x cubed, right? Starting from the left end. And it was getting, the material of the rod was getting denser and denser as you went to the right. So let's practice that one. We found in chapter 9 that the center of mass of that rod was 4 fifths L, I believe. So it was way out here. Okay? So now let's find the moment of inertia of this rod about the uh, moment of inertia of the rod about the left end. The moment of inertia of the rod about the center of mass. And the moment of inertia of the rod about the right end. Okay. I about the left end, I about the center of mass, I about the right end. Now in this case, which one is easiest to do? Let's see. I would like to do it so that I do the easiest integral first. And then I don't need to reintegrate to do each one. I can use the parallel axis theorem, right? So which one is easiest to do? Well, the easiest one to do is the one that where the x is defined from, OK? So in other words, if the linear mass density is kappa x cubed where x is defined to be the distance from the left end point, OK, and the material of the rod is getting denser starting from the left end point and going to the, all the way to the right end point. So if x is defined from the left end point, then do i of left end. That's the easiest integral to do. It's harder to do the other ones. Okay? So do the i about the axis where the linear mass density is defined from. Now for the cylinder and the sphere, they will usually be defined from the center of the cylinder. The linear mass density of the, 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 the density of the cylinder will get will increase or decrease starting from the center. So for the cylinder, it's an easy thing. You you always start from the center. Okay? But the rod, it depends where, where x is defined from. So let's do I of left end. Now you do integral r squared dm. That's where you always start from. That's your starting point, OK? And then uh, r becomes x. You take an element here uh, whose thickness is dx. And uh, the r is the distance to that element. So r is the x. And dm is lambda dx, where lambda is the linear mass density. So uh, this is sort of the same technique that we did when we found the center of mass of the object. Okay, So now, uh, lambda, you put in kappa x cubed. <clears throat> and then you're left with x to the fifth, or dx, 0 to l. And now you integrate that, kappa x to the, um, I put in lambda was uh, kappa x cubed. x cubed and x to the second became x to the fifth. And then here kappa, and integrate this l to the sixth over six. Okay? Then you do another integral, just like for cylinders and spheres. You do two integrals. One for the i, one for the mass. And then you have here m, you integrate here, uh, um, integral dm, the dm is lambda dx, lambda is kappa x cubed dx 0 to l, and then you're left with kappa l to the fourth over 4. And then you, uh, what we want to do is we want to get rid of kappa, 
because we want our final answer to be in terms of m. So kappa equals 4m over L to the fourth. Okay, and then that one, now we substitute into this kappa. I about the left end, so substitute this kappa into that kappa, and then you get 4m over L to the fourth, L to the sixth over six, which is two-thirds ml squared. Remember, as I said in the lab, we, uh, we have uh, 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 the moment of inertia should always be some constant times the mass times the size squared or the radius squared. It can't be radius cubed or size uh, cubed or size to the power of one or whatever. It always is size uh, mass times size squared. Okay, so two-thirds ml squared. <clears throat> okay, now let's find the moment of inertia about the center of mass. Now that one I can use the parallel axis theorem. I can say I about the any axis is equal to I about the center of mass plus uh, MD squared. Okay. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm going to use the parallel axis theorem in a reverse order. I know I have the left axis. So I know that one is 2 thirds ml squared. I have the center of mass I don't know. And then how much is the shift? D means is the shift from the axis that you know the I for to the center of mass axis. So if we come to this picture here, the D would be the distance between the left axis and the center of mass axis which is the center of mass of the object, four-fifths L. So that's the D right there, squared, take this, put it over there, that solves the I center of mass. Two-thirds ML squared minus 16 over 25 ML squared. And that one is going to be 50 minus uh, 48 is 2. 2 over 75, right? It's pretty small. Then we're going to analyze what they mean, these, these equations, these numbers, if they make sense or not. <clears throat> then we can do I about the right end. So now I know this rod, it's made of very light material here, and it gets denser, 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 denser here. Its center of mass is right here. The I about this edge is 2 thirds ml squared. The I about this end is uh, 220, uh, 2, uh, 75th ml squared. And then if I want to find the I to the right, Okay, you got to shift from the center of mass back to there. You can't, you, let me repeat this again, you can't shift from here to there, from the left to the right. Okay, you, you can't use the parallel axis theorem to shift from the left to the right. If you try it and see, you're going to get the wrong answer. You got to sh first shift to the center of mass. And then from the center of mass, you shift to the right. So from the center of mass, uh, I, I about the right end is uh, 275th ml squared plus m. And then what's d? The d is the shift from here to here, right? One fifth. One fifth l squared. So that's going to be one. Uh, 125th and then